Now we're going to talk about key valuation metrics that are used in the e-commerce industry. These are critical to understand when building a financial model and understanding the outputs that most analysts are going to talk about. There are two main categories of metrics, customer metrics and financial metrics. First, a quick overview on the customer side of metrics. We're going to run through quite a few of these in detail, but at a high level, things like customers, customer churn rate, the average order value per checkout, the lifetime value or customer lifetime value as it's also called, the cost to acquire a customer, the total addressable market that you are trying to serve as a business, the average revenue per user, and net promoter score are all very important customer metrics to understand and will all be incorporated in our model in one way or another. On the financial side of these metrics, there are again quite a few to go through, but gross merchandise value is very important and referred to in some types of e-commerce businesses, but not in others. Gross profit or gross margin, dollars and percentages, the sell-through rate, the enterprise value per customer, the enterprise value relative to revenue, the enterprise value relative to gross profit, EV to EBITDA, and finally, probably one of the most important metrics, the lifetime value divided by customer acquisition cost. So let's go through those in a little more detail now. The first is active customers. Active customers is defined as the number of customers who have ordered in the last 12 months. That is the most common duration for an active customer. Some companies will define it over a longer time period, say number of customers who've ordered over 24 months or 36 months, depending on the type of business. 12 months, however, is the most common. The churn rate is the percentage of customers who are no longer active after the same period as you define your active customer base. So in this case, the number of customers who have dropped off after 12 months. The average order value, or sometimes also referred to as average order size, is the number of items per order times the price per item. This is the average checkout value. The lifetime value is a cust of a customer, or also sometimes called the customer lifetime value, is the net present value of contribution margin per customer. We're going to walk through this in more detail in the model. And there is a wide range of definitions of lifetime value in the industry. Some companies refer to the value of the revenue per customer over their life, some to the gross profit, and the most conservative is to the contribution margin dollars. But that's really the most important in understanding the actual economics of the business. Customer acquisition cost is the cost to acquire a new customer. The total addressable market is the annual value of all the goods and services in that market that you are trying to address. This is very important for investors to get a sense of how big the opportunity is. Average revenue per user is revenue divided by number of users. And finally, net promoter score is a real good indication of how happy your customers are with your business and their experience buying with you. So we will run through an example of that later in the course, but it's conducted by survey. Now, onto the financial metrics in more detail. Gross merchandise value compared to revenue is a very different metric. The gross merchandise value is the value of all goods sold on a site. So for a marketplace type of business, this number would be very large. An analogy that I would draw is that if you are a realtor, a real estate agent, calculating the value of all the houses that you sold in a year would be your gross merchandise value. The commissions you earned from selling all those houses would be your revenue. So be very careful when companies are talking about gross merchandise value uh, compared to revenue. They're very different numbers. Gross profit or gross margin um, is like any other business. However, in e-commerce, there is some difference with shipping or fulfillment. Some companies include it in their cost of goods sold. Other companies do not include it in cost of goods sold. It's not really too important one way or the other. The only thing that's important is that you understand whether or not it's included. 
The sell-through rate is the percentage of inventory sold over a period of time, in our case a year. The enterprise value per active customer is the market value of the equity plus the net debt divided by the number of active customers. This is a very crude metric. This is very far away from cash flow and not really a great indication of economic value. However, it could be interesting for a pre-revenue business or uh, a business that's before profitability and certainly is referenced in the industry. EV to revenue, we're now getting a little bit closer to cash flow. Again, the value of the equity plus the net debt divided by the revenue. Multiples of EV to revenue could range anywhere from 0.5 times to 3 or 4 times, depending on a variety of factors, and we'll get into that a bit later. EV to gross profit is, again, the enterprise value, or equity plus net debt, divided by gross profit. We're now getting a little bit closer to cash flow because we've adjusted for the gross margin, which can vary quite a bit across the industry, but again, Shipping may or may not be included at this point, and, and therefore it's still not a fantastic indicator of economic value, but is getting a little bit warmer. And then finally, you've got EV to EBITDA, now getting much closer to cash flow, although still not all the way there. And this is the enterprise value of the business divided by the earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Finally, lifetime value divided by customer acquisition cost. As you'll see the line being drawn on this graph, uh, you definitely want this multiple to be uh, more than one, and ideally, you know, five plus times is, is a great number. So just to walk through an example with you, um, you take the contribution margin per customer, and then you multiply that by the average customer life. So in this example, we're saying that we sell a product for $1,000, 70% is the contribution margin, the churn rate is 20%, which means the customer life is about five years, and it costs $500 to acquire the customer. In this example, we have an LTV to CAC ratio of seven times. That would be a very high lifetime value to customer acquisition cost ratio.